Hello all Twilight fans, Avowed, the new first person RPG from Insidian Entertainment, has a bright and vibrant world that you will want to get the most visual enjoyment out of that you can. So let's see how much GPU horsepower you need to get the most visual pop at 5120x1440p. Let's start by looking at the base performance, without any upscaling or frame generation. Here we are using epic settings with ray tracing on, as it is on by default. At a glance you can see that not even the RTX 4090 is clearing 60fps mark, but with 1% lows that stay well above 30, it is a playable experience on an active sync monitor. The RTX 4080, 700 XTX, 700 XT, and the 4070 Ti all manage average frame rates above 30 FPS, but the 4080 is the only one of the four that keeps its 1% lows above 30 FPS. But with an average frame rate below 45 FPS, not even an active sync monitor can provide a satisfactory play experience. The XTX sees some poorer than expected 1% lows with it matching the 700 XT. This is strange behavior as the 3440x1440 and the 5120x2160 1% low performances have much smaller deltas and the issue crops up just by changing the resolution and is resolved when changing back. So hopefully this is an issue that can be fixed when a valve driver goes from a beta status to regular release status. And last, we have the RTX 4070, which is the sole card not to clear 30 FPS, and despite its tight 1% lows, the overall frame rate is just too low for a good experience. Now let's see if some upscaling can save some of the performance numbers. Turning on quality upscaling for DLSS and FSR puts the RTX 4090, 4080, and 7900 XTX all over the 60 FPS line. The 4090's 1% lows nearly cross the 60 FPS mark, and the 4080 stays above 45 FPS, providing an enjoyable experience for any user on an ActiveSync monitor. The 7900 XTX, however, is seeing unsatisfactory 1% lows that spoil its 60 FPS average. The RTX 4070 Ti and 7900 XT both have acceptable average frame rates, but only the Ti manages to clear 30 FPS with its 1% lows while the XT falls just shy. The RTX 4070 can't quite reach the 45 FPS mark, but it does have a very tight 1% lows, matching the TI at 34 FPS, which, if you have low frame rate compensation on your monitor, could make for a stutter free play experience. Despite only three of our cards clearing the 60 FPS line, that both Nvidia and AMD recommend you hit before using frame generation, let's turn it on for all cards and see what we get. One thing to note though is that NVIDIA cards have game engine level integration with frame generation where AMD cards are forced to use the driver based AFMF rather than the FSR3 frame gen. The RTX 4090 sees nearly a 50% frame rate increase nearly hitting 120 FPS with 1% lows well over 60 FPS. The 7900 XTX, XT and 4080 all seem to be tied in performance, with all three cards squeaking into high refresh rates with an average over 90 FPS. That is, until you look at the 1% lows, where the AMD cards have only half of the 1% low performance of the 4080, making the 4080 the better experience by far as its 1% lows easily clear 60 FPS. The 4070 Ti and the 4070 both clear a 60 FPS for their averages, but with 1% lows below 60, you're going to have slightly sluggish reaction times, as your inputs will be sub 30 Hz. Nothing game breaking, but if it's the kind of thing you're sensitive to, it could drive you up the wall. While AMD cards do exhibit terrible 1% lows, hopefully due to running on a beta driver, the Nvidia cards see some odd things happen with their 1% lows when upscaling and frame gen are turned on. Here we see a strange phenomenon with the Nvidia cards, where the 1% lows are lower with each consecutive pass of my test runs while the average FPS stays flat. This does not happen without using DLSS, but with DLSS on, it happens across all the NVIDIA GPUs as you can see here. Now, I don't know if this is something that is just the effect of playing for three minutes in a row, or if reloading a zone two additional times is the culprit, but there seems to be some kind of performance bug with DLSS in this game that doesn't affect non-DLSS performance. Let's take a look at the performance uplift for each performance setting. Here we see that if AMD can sort its 1% low issues for the final release driver, they will be neck and neck with their Nvidia rivals despite the game using ray tracing. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos and want to catch some more, please subscribe. The more of you that subscribe, the better chance for me to get a GPU vendor to send me some test samples. 
If you have a regular 1440p ultrawide or a 5K 2K ultrawide, those videos might be available now for you to click on. If you want to help out in other ways, you can always become a member, sign up for my Patreon, or use my Amazon affiliate link. I'm Scott, and I'll see you next time, ultrawide fans.